as you ramp up your business, your ability to produce documentation, uh, paperwork, uh, and, and essentially proposals for customers is going to increase. And the ability to do it automatically is going to be essential. If we can have structured forms, if we can have templated paperwork trails that produces uh, uh, Google Docs or Word Docs or PDFs, if we can send out emails to the various different internal members to get approvals, to send the paperwork out. And if the clients or the people receiving the paperwork can receive it in a format where they can then take action, you're gonna have uh, the real ability to scale any business. And that's what we're gonna to do today. We're going to combine the tools you already got uh, as part of your Google workspace um, without needing any other tools. Best of all, Later on, as you find any uh, deficiencies, any of those tools, any limitations, or uh, there's just a sparkly feature, um, then you get to replace each one as you go along later in the business. Uh, I'm actually gonna talk about the limitations of each of these. So let's firstly, we'll go through why each of these tools, why you would wanna use them, and why you wouldn't wanna use them. And then we'll spend the rest of the video talking about, uh, we'll do a demo, and then we'll build all of this for you. So why Google Forms? It's free. Um, now, one of the reasons you might not have seen a lot of videos about Google Forms, make.com, is that a lot of people think you can't trigger uh, workflows, that you can't get um, uh, webhooks. You can, and later in the video, we're gonna look at how to do that. Um, but why not is because how to do that requires using Google Apps Script and a bit of code. Why do we wanna use Google Docs? Well, one, you're already using it. Uh, you're probably pretty good at it. And the templating is pretty easy. Uh, it's just some curly brackets and some strings um, and the make module uh, does the rest. Why not is that that templating is somewhat limited um, and there may be things you can't do simply. Um, you might like to be able to do signatures. So when someone, you send a document, can you get a signature? Uh, I'm not aware of, of a simple way to do that. And if you do, let me know in the comments. And payments, similarly, it might be great if you could uh, have them approve the document by making a payment. I'm not aware of a way to do that. If you know, please let me know in the comments. Um, why Google Sheets? Well, you're already using it. Uh, Google Sheets, Google Excel, uh, sorry, Excel, Microsoft Excel. They're the simplest things. We've learned to do them since we're teenagers um, and they do a lot of things. The limitations are probably, um, the challenge of, of, of working with the, these sheets is that the columns are numbered. And what that means is if you go back and add a column early on, then possibly all your workflows, everything that depends on where the location of each value is in a column uh, could be broken. And that becomes pretty tedious pretty quickly. Um, but we're gonna be building this out and you might not see that issue because I'll probably know where I wanna put all the fields. But it is something you'll discover is that the fields are referenced by their ABC, their sort of numbered sequential location, not the fact that the column is called first name, project name. And that becomes a little tedious. Um, also, they, they lack some structured formatting of, of what values can go in them, but, but, but that's probably secondary. Uh, I'm going to use internal email or emails to sort of send out approvals. Of course, you could use Slack, you could use uh, any other notification system, uh, but, uh, but email is pretty good. And uh, what I love about this, what we're going to be building, is that whilst we're starting with the tools we've already got, Google Forms, Google Docs, Google Sheets, you can replace each and every one of them independently later on. So you could switch to Typeform, um, PandaDoc or uh, ClickUp or any other CRM, any other document generation system or any other form system. And uh, you'll be able to pull those apart later on whenever you're ready. We're now gonna do a demonstration of what this workflow looks like. So you can say, that's pretty good. I'll have that, some of that. And then we'll spend the rest of the video building it. So stick around. Bit of a demo. Uh, this is the template, of course, it's very short not at all satisfactory, but the gist of it is, is these fields uh, will be populated based on the values coming out of the forms. Of course, you could also uh, generate the values with ALI. Not gonna cover that in this video, but it's certainly something you could have a look at. Here is our Google form. Um, we'll say this is going to someone called Tracy. Uh, I do need, I've clicked this. Another benefit of Google forms uh, is that you can limit them to so that only internal people can use them, people who have your domain. And that's what I've got for this one. Um, I've also forced that uh, it will record who submitted it. And I'm gonna use that because I will then send that person, me, a, an email saying that the document is ready, could you please approve it? So this is handy in that A, we have authorization of who's allowed to see, see the form and authentication that we know who sent the form in. So let's say that the, 
customer is called Tracy. We've just had a whole onboarding call. She's interested in a proposal and we're now gonna send this out to Tracy. Uh, it's gonna use one of my emails uh, for Tracy. Uh, Tracy would like um, some uh, powdered, no, she'd like a lawn mowing. And she would like front lawn mode, uh, backyard, and uh, the, the nature strip, please. And that's the data we've collected from the phone call and we've said, give us a couple of hours, we'll send you a proposal. It's gonna take us two minutes. And we press submit and we wait patiently. Um, here is the spreadsheet where that data has po been populated. You can see that uh, it's come through from the spreadsheet and now that document has been built and is ready to send. Uh, yeah, you could live off this spreadsheet, but um, who wants to do that? Instead, what we've got is an email got sent to the person that submitted the form, the internal staff member, which is me in this case, and it has the action items. So I can click on review and edit the document that was prepared and I can read it and double check that it's all good. Um, uh, I could say, um, you know, say backyard mowing, whatever it is, you know, whatever the edit is, it's all part of, I don't need to go back and change the form or anything. This is the final document, it just gets edited. Go back to the email and press approve and send. This is going off to make.com uh, to do this work. You can sort of see there's a, oops, you can sort of see there's a make URL and we've given ourselves a pretty, uh, it's always worth having something pretty. Uh, and so that showed us that it had succeeded and then that tab disappeared, which is lovely. Um, and now over in this inbox, this is Tracy's inbox, another email box. We can see this is the email that got sent to Tracy that includes uh, some pleasantries um, to Tracy and includes a PDF of that document that we had internally. So not a link to the original, but just a, a link to a different form format that, uh, that she gets. And that is the whole workflow. We've got structured data from a form, we've got uh, internal approvals, and we've got an email being sent out to the client with the document. So if that's interesting, we're gonna spend the rest of the video building this from scratch, and it's pretty interesting stuff. The, uh, the, this is the gist of what we're gonna build, but uh, we will start from, from scratch um, and flesh it out. Now, um, this is a spreadsheet I've already built, um, but I think we can, should we start from scratch? We, we shall. Um, well, look, it's fine. The spreadsheet is the spreadsheet. I want you to say, yeah, you would build out a spreadsheet like this. Now, uh, try to pull all the columns in that you think you might need. It, as I've mentioned earlier, it's kind of tedious to add extra columns in because some of your automations not work. So if you think you might need a last name, put it in. If you think you might need a project name, a project outline, the, the labels aren't important. You can rename those easily. Um, now, a couple of little uh, tips of, of uh, what we've got here is some links. Um, because uh, they're just useful to see. We've got a status and then some sort of metadata, secondary data off to the side. And in fact, you can see I've made the status as big as I can to sort of hide those on, on, on this laptop screen, but they're there. So let's, um, let's build from scratch using the, the columns that I've got here. So we're gonna, well, sorry, just to recap the way we're gonna build this out. We're gonna build it from sort of the inside out. So we'll start with um, doing the, 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 the Google Doc, how do, how do we template a Google Doc? How do we generate a Google Doc from make.com? Well then, how do we do it from a spreadsheet? And then, how do we do it from a form into a spreadsheet to a Google Doc? Um, and then we'll have some of the other workflow as we go along as well. Um, so if you're interested in just one of those sections, look in, the, uh, look in the, the chapter headings and you'll find the section you're looking for. But for this section, we're going to create uh, just starting point of the Google Doc itself. Now I've got a file here called a proposal template. Um, the name of the file we get to provide later on. So only thing we need to worry about here in this, and this template is just another Google Doc. It's just a Google Doc and I've got some plain text which has the curly brackets. Um, and if you provide that, that we could, uh, anything you like. So how do we take that document and produce another document with values put in. Well, first things first, let's get some values. Um, tools, set, variables. So what we're gonna pretend now is that we've got those values coming that later on come from the spreadsheet. So first name, um, we had Tracy, uh, email, 
Tracy at herbiz.com. Um, what else do we need for the document? We actually didn't put that in the document. Um, we need uh, the project summary. Uh, we had lawn mowing and then some other sort of plain text that will get popped in and turned into nice uh, Google Docs formatted things. So uh, project outline. Um, we had front yard and backyard. So these are just um, fake variables. Okay, these are the variables that we're going to use to generate um, and even though I just so need fake webhook. We'll call this a fake webhook. Now, let's build ourselves a Google Doc. Fortunately, uh, under Google Docs, there is a couple of options. We've got Create Document, which lets us um, have a name and content. So if we have we built out the entire content, then we could use this one. But we're going to use the template that we have. So we want to use we want to use an existing document as the basis. And there's one here called Create a Document from a Template. So we'll pick that one. Um, in this case, we will find the document. Tutorials. in here somewhere these are all the other documents we want this one here perhaps I shouldn't have put the generated proposals and the template in the same folder I think I would change that in production okay it's now looking through now this is a bit of a make.com feature that it loaded up the file found all the double curly brackets and has given them back to us which is just pretty lovely um, so we'll just map through our variables. Now, when we wire up a webhook later on, so when the form is submitted, uh, it will post into a webhook and then we'll take the values out of the webhook. But for now, we will use, uh, well, sorry, next we're going to do a spreadsheet, the value that come from a spreadsheet. And thirdly, we'll do a webhook. Um, so let's wire these in, project summary and project proposal outline. The title, uh, project, Proposal from Mokra to uh, Tracy, and then the summary. Uh, where do we want this to go? Against my better judgment, we will put it in the same folder rather than spend time creating a new folder. Okay, it'll go in there. Rename this Generate Proposal from Template. Well, if we give that a run, we will see that the good people at Google have made a new document for us. And if we take this URL and go to it, there is our document with our values populated in, lawn mowing, and the, uh, actually it notes that it uh, hasn't given us nice pretty print and that might not be what we want. Um, okay. So we now have that email, uh, that URL. So you could imagine we could now send this out to uh, internal people and get um, um, and get them to approve it and move it forward. But what does it mean to approve if um, if we don't have a flow? So in order for that, in order for us to send out the proposal, this email here, okay, we could do that here. Um, we would use the mail. We'll go send an email. Um, add recipient. The recipient would be, and we don't actually have um, it coming through from the fake web, but we don't have the internal staff member. Um, so let's, what have we got? Uh, staff email. another column we will need and add recipients so this will go to the staff email the subject is proposal or review and sending uh, please review the proposal for Tracy project this one and then uh, we'll go. in fact we need this is an email so we need to use the BR tags for our new lines 
um, we can also use HTML. So we're, well, we want some sort of link. We don't know what that link is yet. So we'll just put there the uh, review, but my mistake, approve and send. So that will be um, that one. And we want another link for review and edit. Now this second one is a little easier. Sorry, the first one's a little easier. We actually have that um, URL because it's included from here. So we've got that one. And the second one, this approve and send, um, we will need a second make scenario to capture that. So we'll come back to that shortly. Um, we can probably make this a nice bullet point. Um, say ordered list, that's an HTML tag for numbers. Um, and we'll do a bit of uh, numbers here. Um, and that will look fine. Um, Okie dokie. And we don't need to attach the document because uh, we have the link there and, and because we're using Gmail internally, Gmail will know that this is a Google Doc and, and include a sort of attachment. We could um, now, we could uh, run this uh, module only and fill in these details, um, but it's pretty harmless. Let's just run the whole thing again. We should get an email. There it is, and that looks pretty good. So there is the link to that document that we generated for Tracy, and the non-existent uh, link to the approve and send, which we'll come back to later. Um, so that's great. We now have a way to do this at all, which is handy. But now let's wire this up. So the second part that we did uh, the, the sending, we, sorry, we built out the document. Now let's build it out coming from this spreadsheet. Uh, and then later on, we'll do some sort of, of um, uh, Google form. All right, so let's continue on our merry way. Let's detach this, move it off to one side. Now let's add a um, Google Sheet. Yes, that sounds lovely. And we sort of want watch new rows. For now, we'll just search the latest row. Connect automatically, even though that's not what we want. Spreadsheet, um, we will uh, proposals. Proposal inputs is the name of the sheet. Um, sheet one is its name. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Okie dokie. Um, and this is where you might filter. So uh, we'll just take the first one, the sending, ascending. We'll see which one we get. Um, we're not going to be playing with this for too long. So um, we'll just take max number of rows. But we might say, well, we want one that has no status. So if we add a row in manually, um, status does not exist or is empty or something. Let's find that. And we can unconnect that, unlink, and instead connect that up there. Oh, yeah, it's not all there. Ooh, give. Let's redo that. Okay. And in fact, let's just block that off for the moment. Let's find out what happens. That has, that's fine. Well, let's just unlink it then. All right, so it's found zero bundles because we have not yet added. Um, so let's go, Gary also wants lawn mowing. Let's just copy all of those. So now we've entered in the new row and the status is blank. So let us see if it now has a better attitude about finding Gary. It has found Gary and uh, so we now have a technique for finding new rows and in fact we don't have to find just one returned row we could return as many as we like if we wanted this technique and essentially every uh, 15 minutes this would run 
find any new rows and generate the documents for them. And this might be what you want. Uh, we will be moving to a form and uh, it'll all happen based on submitting the form using a webhook, but this is an option. Let's wire this up. We can now get rid of our X since that didn't work very well for us anyway. Um, so now instead of mapping fields to our fake webhook down here, we will map them to the columns. Now it nicely says that the title is first name, but we should never forget that it's the A column from which this value is coming from. And if we were to go and add another column here, everything would be wrong. And this is a little tedious and it leads to breakages. Uh, so highly recommend only adding columns at the end of your spreadsheet, unless you're prepared to go back and fix everything. Uh, the project is the project name, and I should have given these all the same. Uh, was there any more? There were. First name and project name. Perhaps that, and now sending the email. Similarly, we wish to switch from our fake webhook set variables to our Google Sheet row. Project proposal for Gary, and the project is lawn mowing. That is all the same. And staff email. We do not have a staff email column. So I could do this and, you know, I almost feel like I should do it just to demonstrate the ridiculousness. The moment we'll just put this in all right the staff will be me because uh, we're going to have a form and this value will come from the form so let's just hard code this everything else is coming from the spreadsheet let's run this one more time it'll find that empty row generate the proposal for Gary and then email me about the proposal all right so we're looking good We've got this, we've got this. Now, this did not update. And therefore, if I ran it again, it would um, would send, it was generated another document. So we do not wish for that. We will now update our spreadsheet so that uh, the status is set. Update a row. Search method, we can pass through the spreadsheet ID from over here. Go away, spreadsheet ID here. And that way, if we change what spreadsheet we're working with, we only need to change it in this first one and uh, all the other steps will just borrow those, those fields. Um, and the row, the ever important row numbers, the, sorry, the, the row number is here and the column range, just what I'm using. There's 26 columns. And look at this, how tedious that is. That it, uh, so unfortunately, because I've used this technique, I now don't get nice names. And I'm confused about my preference. I think we'll, uh, for the sake of the video, let's go and use um, the pretty names. So now that we've given it a specific spreadsheet ID, it will uh, be able to put names to each of these columns. And that's a little bit nicer, but we actually don't need to change any of those. The only thing we need to change is this next step. Um, now, uh, Google Sheets doesn't have typed value, so we have to come up with a name and stick with it. And we'll call it ready to send, which is the value that I've played around with here and given them pretty colors inside the spreadsheet. Um, so if we were to run this module only and edit row, where's my rows? Row number eight. It will run that. If we come back here, we should see that it's now updated to ready to send with an underscore for reasons I don't know. Okay. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So this is great. We've got one half of our, our, our system. We've um, got a spreadsheet. Uh, I say one half. 
we haven't done the approval part. But we now have a place to update the fact that we have sent the approval. Um, oh, it looks like I've put in a Google link here. That seems like a nice idea. We could do that. Um, what else could we do? Let's go to the Google link. Well, we know where we can get that link from. We get it from there. What else did I put in my lovely spreadsheet? The Google document ID. We will need that so that we have that for later. In fact, that's how we're going to find this row again. This becomes like the unique row. Um, so when the webhook comes in, this is how we find this row again. Uh, I think I played around with these. Um, next step, we haven't quite got to that yet. Um, well, let us uh, start this again. We'll get rid of ready to send. And so therefore it should process this row again. Sent me the email and it updated the spreadsheet. And here we can see that it's looking good. We've got the ID, we've got that. This is different. You can see I've got a nice little hyperlink here. What have I done? I've put my seven. Yeah, uh, let's not worry about it. This was me playing around before. This link is fine. We end up using um, the email. Um, really is the canonical place to get this link. So this is more just for the storage. Okay. So now we can move on to, to processing uh, that accept and send uh, idea. And we'll give this a name of one generate proposal from a sheet. I don't think we need this fake webhook anymore. We'll save that. You're in progress. If there's one unrewarding activity, it's accidentally refreshing the page and make. So to recap, we have taken a row from a spreadsheet, created a document and emailed ourselves to approve it. Now, in order to do the approval and to convert it into a PDF and to send it out to client, we have a second scenario. We start with a webhook. Tutorial um, approve and send doc. Okie dokie, let's copy that. Um, and so if we were to just pop that URL in a browser and press enter, come over here, you'll see that uh, it came through, we received it, there had nothing in there. Um, don't need to anymore. If we were to run this again, we could pass in some parameters. So let's say we passed in document ID equals one, two, three, four. And now we get that document ID as a value, um, a parameter inside of make that we can use. And that is what we're going to use to communicate from uh, which document we wish to talk about. Because uh, we could reference row eight it seems a little flaky because maybe someone adds some rows or deletes some rows. Whereas if we use the document ID, we will be able to find this entire row with that document ID. So what we would like to do, we'll just, uh, we'll just play with this, uh, this approve URL. So we've got, um, we'll take the webhook. Um, where are we? We're over here. Let's bring this closer. Let us uh, equal uh, concatenate. Oh, look at that being ever so helpful. Except that's not correct. There we go. Um, that is an incredible guess. Thank you very much, Google. Um, we wish to concatenate the webhook URL with the question mark and the document ID, some, some um, key name that will mean something to us on the other side when we receive it. And the value will be the H8 here. Okay, 
So now you can see that these other ones have different value from a different spread, a different uh, workflow that I've been working on prior to taking the video. But we're now building this out. We have a new uh, webhook. And if I was to let's run this, if I was to open this in a browser, you can see that it passed through document ID and my document ID. If we come, oops, if we come here, we can see we have the document ID. Excellent. Let's give this a name. Um, request uh, send document to prospect. Lovely. Now we need to find the document again. I mentioned that we're using the document ID as sort of like our primary key into the spreadsheet. So let us say search rows. Once again, we are hard baking into this, which spreadsheet we're working with, which might not be wishy what you want, but it will work perfectly fine. We could have also passed through the spreadsheet ID here and all these other fields. Not sure why. So the way we're going to find the row that we want is by passing in the document ID into this sort of filter. And as long as we promise ourselves we'll only ever have one document ID per unique ID, this will always return one. Uh, we can say one, even though we know we'll only get one. We'll rename this as find row by document ID. And here is our document ID. Let us run this module only. And look at us, we've found our row again. This is fantastic. This will allow us to find the document and we'll now be able to get a PDF version and we'll be able to send the email to the contact. And finally, we'll be able to update the status to say that we did already send the document, but we do not wish to do it again. Let us get the Google document. Download a document. This might be what we're looking for. Document ID. Um, we will change that to map. And we are passing that value in through the webhook. Um, there are two approaches here. Do you take the most canonical value that came in at the start of the scenario? Or do you find it somewhere later? And um, it may not matter. And what I mean by that, do I use this document ID or do I use this document ID? We have this same value in two places. Um, the benefit of using a later one is that if I was to ever change where the value originally came from, if it went from a webhook to something else, I wouldn't have to change all the other places that I referenced that value. So I'm going to use this one. But uh, this, you know, there are two places so far in this scenario where the same value is available. Uh, I, uh, as part of our corporate ideas, we will send this to the prospect as a PDF that they can easily print um, since they may not have any other format. Um, and also if our document has special formatting, it will come out nicely. Um, download as PDF. Oops, to do that lost my document ID. It is that one there. Run this module only. And we would get a data object. So that's interesting, isn't it? A data object. Not a, you don't get a PDF, you don't get a file or a URL. We get the all the bits that make up this thing that is a PDF. Let's hope that that all works out well for us. We now wish to send this to the prospect. We'll use the mail, uh, send an email. Um, we have a couple of options. There is send a draft or create a draft, but uh, we've already approved the bulk of the document and assuming the rest of it is, is templated and, and, and relatively benign, we do not need to, uh, perhaps we do not need to review the uh, draft. Uh, save this message after sending. Look, it doesn't matter right now. Uh, you might like to do that. Uh, we wish to send it to the contact. The subject is um, proposal for review and 
lawn mowing. The content of the email will be, we'll say HTML because then we can make it look pretty. Hey, Gary. Dear, dear. Thank you for our meeting today. We're assuming that we have one flow and one flow only, which is we had a meeting, we said that we'd send the proposal and this is the proposal. So we can hard bake this content as long as we never change why we sent them a proposal. Uh, here attached is our proposal. Um, and all the other things you might like to say, like a timeline that includes a timeline, please accept today. Um, so a bit of urgency, accept today. Um, but if you cannot accept today, that's fine. We will just need to change and try to find another slot for you much further down. You could put all that in here. Uh, let's keep this brief for today. Thanks, uh, Dr. Nick, or whoever. You know, um, probably this should come from the email. I, maybe you should map this from the internal person's email to a name um, so that it's not always Dr. Nick if you've got multiple people. Now, uh, so we don't have a URL for the document. Instead, we will be attaching it. And here it is here, download a document um, and it's done. Um, if you don't like the file name, then you could change it here, but the file name we already set when we created it. Um, and so we'll, we'll leave it as that until we decide otherwise. Rename, send proposal to prospect. This is unhappy for some reason. run this module only. Okay, we're a bit tricky because we don't have the data. Let's try this one more time. Uh, we'll run this. We've got our webhook. We'll run this webhook one more time. And running a webhook just means loading it in the browser. And look, it sent the email to somewhere um, and it's contained some copy. Where did it go? It went to here. And we've got our email. It concludes that includes the, the PDF document that they can download and read and print and everything else and, and whatever text uh, that we included here. Um, that we so we now have a, a full working flow based around the um, the spreadsheet. What if we, if all we were going to do is use the spreadsheet? Then the one thing we do now need to do is to put this sort of approve and send link here so that people can get to that webhook. Um, and we also want to update the status. So the link for our webhook, I think I had it over here, approval. Um, so I've sort of put the big ugly link over here and here we might make a nice pretty link. Uh, hyperlink, uh, approve and send and it would be J8. Why are you not pretty? Uh, it's the other way around, my mistake. I probably should read the documentation. J8, approve and send. So um, if you were going to be spreadsheet driven, then it's nice to have these pretty little links as opposed to these big ugly links. So we'll put the ugly link off to the side and a pretty link here at the human end of the, the spreadsheet. But it is one of the same. Um, and uh, so you might be wondering, well, where does this come from? I put this in manually. I'm glad you asked. We now need to generate these two links, uh, these two fields in the first scenario so that we have it. But we're looking good. Um, we'll do that in a second. Finally, uh, on this particular scenario, the last thing we need to do is to update the status to sent. Google Sheets, update a row. We will continue with our um, manually picking the document because it looks nicer. Because we get the pretty, we get the pretty um, labels. We want the row number. Row number comes from the fact that we found it already. So now we're just going to find it again. 
And the only thing we need to change is the status to sent. Everything else should be okay. We might like to reset this. Um, since not putting a value just means don't change it, I found that doing equals empty empty is another way of sort of resetting it. Um, change status to sent. Okay, let us run that one more time. It will of course mean, oh, I should have clicked it from here. But anyway, so you can see that it changed the status to sent. It removed the link. So if you were spreadsheet driven, if people were coming back to this spreadsheet looking for work to do, that link would have gone and they would be not encouraged to uh, click it, whereas it is still here. So that's quite nice. Um, I like that. We are going well. So as I mentioned, we now need to go back to the first uh, scenario and we need to build this URL, uh, this webhook URL into our spreadsheet so people can click it. Let's give this a name to uh, send document to prospect. Save that and we would now schedule that to be active so that uh, later on, every time we go to that link, that, that scenario is good to go and will be processed. So as a reminder, this is the first scenario, which is scanning that document, that spreadsheet for new rows, generating documents, sending out an email internally, updating the uh, sheet with uh, the status mostly. But why not we also update with this next step URL? So the next step URL is um, this URL, which is and with our document ID. Um, as long as it's just, this is the text that's going in the field, uh, Google Sheets will automatically figure out that it is a, um, 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 a URL, a negative URL. Now, I've put the same value here. Another approach could be that we um, do some sort of, this is fine, but another approach is that we could um, put in sort of, um, Google Sheets functions. And we could say that this value here is uh, the concatenation of this string and the value in H. Um, and then we wish to get the row. Um, really disliking this premise. This is all the reasons that I don't like. So in this case, we're injecting a formula um, but I'm totally unsure that this is in any way better. Um, and I, I totally dislike this immensely. Um, so we're not going to do it. We'll just build the complete string and put the complete string in there. The other thing we had was that we had that nice, pretty, um, equals hyperlink formula, um, which I got wrong the first time it is the location and prove and send. And I've already expressed my displeasure at what I'm about to do, but we need to do it. Um, I've actually put that in the wrong spot. I think it's approval URL. I'm not sure if we're using, what am I doing? So J, yeah, so we're using the J column. So we'll put the link in there. I don't think I'm using this next step URL. I think that was just an idea I had while I was playing around. Um, I mentioned that I need to hard code that J and we need the row number variable and then the label accept and send. Um, rename set status ready to send. So our, our workflow is now sort of dual, uh, has sort of two user experiences. One is people can come to this spreadsheet and find work to do. You know, you could come to the spreadsheet, scan it and look for uh, approve and send, but it also sends out emails to the original person 
who can take action there. So we've got sort of two workflow um, user experiences. Let us now create a, a new row. Um, uh, Steve also wants lawn mowing me because I'm feeling pretty boring. And we can get rid of that and that. We will now run this scenario. Of course, it would normally run every 15 minutes or every scheduled period. And let's just check that this all looks good. You see, you see now that we've got, um, it says status ready to send. We've got our new link, um, which we would click if we wish to send it. Um, and we will also um, receive the email here. So this is what we sent for Steve. So the person who submitted, put in the, the row would get, uh, get this email, but everyone who scans this spreadsheet could also take action. Lovely. Let's just delete those. Um, so let's go back and try this. So let's click our accept and send. Accepted. And we received a new email. This is Gary. Oh, I'm a Steve one. Hey Steve, there it is. Um, thank you for meeting today. Attached to that proposal. It's a proposal, dear Steve, full lawn mowing, et cetera, et cetera. So our workflow is looking spectacular. Um, and finally, you can see that it has been labeled as sent and that link has gone away. So anyone scanning this document looking for things to do would not see the approve and send link. Excellent. This is great. So finally, uh, what about a form? Talked about Google Forms. Um, I know that many people uh, in the make world uh, seem to not want to use Google Forms because I think um, they either think you cannot send webhooks or they know you can and it's just hard. It's, it's more difficult than it is in many other places. And what do I mean by in many other places? Well, um, in um, most other software, the idea of sending a webhook might be as simple as putting in a URL for a webhook. So on submission of a form, post it to this webhook. That's as simple as it gets. Um, some like Airtable or ClickUp might have a section called automations where you'll wire up if this event happens on this table or this list, um, then trigger a webhook. Slightly more complicated. Google Sheets is similar but different in that we have uh, tools, we have extensions, app scripts. And we're going to use app scripts with a little bit of code that uh, will do the same job. They'll have a trigger that will call the app script. The app script will send the webhook with the payload. Now, before we get to that, we're going to set up Google, Google Form. Now, I do have one already attached, but um, create a new form. Let's start from scratch. Now, I, I also know, as you possibly know, that Google Forms store their records in another sheet. Um, and in part because we've already built all the workflow around this sheet. And also, I'd like to not modify any of the columns of a Google form. I'm just going to ignore the fact that there is uh, the values from the form are stored in a sheet. I'm not going to use it. We're going to take the values submitted. We're going to send them over via webhook and then we're going to copy them back into this sheet. And then we have all our workflow already set up. All right. This is our uh, tutorial submissions. That was that. Now, I've missed the part where it, uh, where I get to see my, my forms. Forms, Google, that's embarrassing. Uh, open just now, thank you. All right, so this is the uh, forms that we wish to have. So we've got uh, new proposals for prospect. Uh, please provide all data that we use for our proposal generation, etc. So the first one is first name. Now, uh, one of the nice things, there's a bunch of different ways that you can provide data. I don't think I'm doing anything fancy in this one. We're just using short answer for nearly all of them. All of them. First name is the text field and we'll mark it as required. 
heaven forbid, we have no idea what happens. Nothing good happens if we don't have that first name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, let's create some more. We need um, the proposal proposal outline. Uh, now we're going to have it as an input of text, but uh, maybe it could be generated in some fashion by AI. But here we'll, we'll put all these in. Short answer, paragraph would be proposal. Oh, I said proposal outline. That would be proposal summary, like a short summary. This one here, proposal outline would be a paragraph. Um, so we're sort of mapping these. So the first name, project name, project outline, contact email. Yes, please, uh, contact email. It is, let's look at that, that's so cool. The guest, I like that a lot. Mark all these as required, please. Okie dokie. So we've got the little, uh, little things. Responses, we don't have any responses yet. Settings, now. How are these? Let's go through each of these. Collect email addresses. We wish to collect the email address of the internal staff member who submitted the form so we can send them an email about the proposal. We wish to have verified, um, send response, copy response, no, uh, editing, no, restrict it to users of Mocker and its trusted organizations. This is great. This means that if the URL to your form was leaked, um, no one else would be able to use it. Um, and we don't wish to restrict it to one response because that same staff member will be submitting many forms. This is not like a quiz or a one-time poll. This is a, a workflow um, form, so we, we don't wish to limit it. Uh, how do we wish to present it? Um, you can play around with those. And I think this is fine. Questions, uh, we can change the theme, etc., etc., etc. And heaven forbid, I once again have forgotten how you actually get the URL to this thing. It's so embarrassing. Send. It's a weird one, isn't it? Click send. In order to get the URL to your form, <sighs> click send. Click on the little link icon, and there it is. We can even get a shortened URL. How lovely. Um, and let's pop that in here. And here is our internal form. You'd put this on your, your knowledge base, wherever it is that you send this out to people so that everyone knows. You'd link it, you'd put it into your bookmark. This is hot stuff as part of your workflow. But the moment you get off the phone call, you populate all this data, details or even as you're going. And uh, so let's just put in some data that's going nowhere and let's see where this goes. Submit, ah yes, I need to confirm that I, Dr. Nick at Mocker, prepared for my email to go through and of course I am. Otherwise, I can't submit the form. Excellent. Where did that go? That went here. Um, and I'm showing you this for the first and only time. It does put it into this, this table, uh, and we are not going to use it because I just feel uh, wrong mod of adding more columns like statuses and URLs and document IDs into this because this table is owned by the form. So instead, I will leave my workflow on this sheet and we will um copy these values across uh, when we press submit now the big thing how do we uh trigger the webhook how do we how do we go from the google form submission to starting you know build copying these values across building the document etc well i'm glad you asked because it's uh, pretty interesting and we're going to do it now if we come over to our form builder, we have a way um, to add scripts to forms and to Google Docs. And it's worth, even if you're not really a coder, it's worth knowing you can do this. Um, and it's possible you can get a fairly long way using ChatGPT to tell you what to do. And I know that because that's exactly how I did it. Yeah. And in fact, I'm going to start with some scaffolding and then I'm just going to go and copy the one I already built. I am. Lovely. Um, send form to make.com. On form submission, submit. I'm going to pass in some sort of event. 
uh, is there a log? I don't think log logger log e. I don't know whatever. Um, so this will be the function that's handled when uh, it's created. Triggers on the left hand side under overview editor project history triggers. We click on trigger, and we will now add a trigger down the bottom right. Uh, we will run the on form submit function that we just created that doesn't do anything. We will deploy the head. Uh, there's no versions of this, we'll just forget it. Um, event source from form, select event type on form submit. So when the form is submitted, call this function. And if it fails, tell me about it immediately, please. Okay. No, you take your time. I'll stretch. I should always stretch while we're doing this sort of thing. Yes. So now I'm giving um, app scripts permission to do things with my form. All built in. Okie dokie. And, uh, and here's my code. And so now we're going to just quickly submit the form and see if we can see where this log goes. Um, now, I also happen to think there is one called response, responses. I think it's responses. Submit another response. Yes, 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 yes. Submit that. We'll come down here to executions. And here is our execution. And it did nothing. Where are my logs? All right, I'll tell you what. We have a couple of ways I could go and read all this in, um, in uh, ChatGPT, or I could just go and copy from our other one. quite long it's a little bit long on form submit we will copy it and discuss it edit uh, I'll make this available um, and if I if I don't just leave a comment okay this is from my other form we now have to get the webhook need to get that webhook URL, pop it into my script, and then I'll explain what the script does. And then we need to update. So stop looking inside the spreadsheet and start re responding to the webhook. Uh, oh, my mistake. Um, I'm confused about what webhook I'm talking about. I actually need a webhook that does not exist yet. So this is uh, entry webhook to copy values to spreadsheet and generate document from template. That's what needs to happen here. Um, and that does not exist yet. So it's not this one, not, it's not this webhook we've already got. It's a webhook we don't already got. Let's go back here. So right now, uh, this scenario starts by looking for new rows. We're not going to be doing that anymore. In fact, we can unlink that. We wish to add a new module. We will move the starting point of our scenario to this yet to be discovered uh, specified module, and we will create a new webhook. We've got to give them names, tutorial, uh, form submission. Proposal form, oh, so close. Proposal form submission. This address here is the address we wish to copy over into this. That is there. And I will now explain how this works and what is about to happen. Uh, we'll rename this, uh, receive form submission. 
let's see if we can run this. We can. Okay. So it's waiting for us to submit the form. So to remind what we have. We have a form described and we've added some, uh, we've added a trigger. So when the form is uh, run, it runs this function. And uh, when it runs this function, it will get the response. Um, that was response, not responses, my mistake. It will get the uh, response object, get the responses. A response is each of the answers in the uh, form. The whole thing is a form. Each of the different questions is a response. And we build up a payload. And in that payload has two different things. It has the email address uh, of the person submitting it, which is Dr. Nick. It has the timestamp. And we don't really use either of those. It's just, I found out how to get them. Uh, and I like to keep pops passing them through because it's free. So internal uh, form response, uh, the timestamp, um, but this is important. This was the person who submitted the form uh, that works. And then the values will go into this object. And then we loop through. And again, I uh, got this from ChatGPT, and um, but I will make this available. Uh, or you can copy and paste it from the screenshot. Um, and then we're going to pass that through here. So let's save that if it wasn't already saved. And let us see if we can get this to come through here by uh, by, by filling this form one more time. Probably not for the last time. Submit the form. Fingers crossed that this works. It does not look to be working. So let's have a look at our logs. It looks like it sent something. It didn't go here. Right, so once this was working um, and I had a brief moment there where it was not because I got confused because I had two forms and two scripts and I made a mess. You will not have that problem because you only have one script. Anyway, I made a mistake. Once it's wired up correctly, as we discussed, it will now send through um, the email address of the internal person and the responses that they uh, put into the form, which is fantastic. So we can now uh, wire this up to our spreadsheet, uh, to our document and the rest of our flow. First name comes from, now it's coming directly from the form. And again, we're not using the, 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 uh, the form spreadsheet. We're just gonna use what comes from the webhook. And then we are finished. Two first name for summary. We send the internal person an email. The uh, email address to whom we send it now comes from the webhook. Uh, for, which came from the Google form. Uh, this is for the project of excellent. And now we add this to uh, the row. So now we are not updating. I'll tell you what, let's delete this. Yes, don't need you. Rather than uh, put this straight into here, well, not so much rather than, but let's also store this in the Google Sheet immediately. So add a row. Looking good, looking good. Sticking with me like champions. So let's copy those values across. That should be pretty simple. Outline, contact email, um, et cetera, et cetera. And the status is form submitted, which uh, will just temporarily show up. And we do not currently store who sent, uh, we can pop that in here, the email address of the staff. Copy form to sheet. And 
Now here we will get this from row number there and just update that looking good everything else is the same so now we can turn this on uh, we also uh, run that manually and we'll send through an, a uh, just a sort of form the final form to sort of show that the whole thing this is the big demo this is the big demo that everything's working um, we'll go with uh, uh, Nick and uh, my my poorly named namesake it's with 33% extra letters in their name. Um, they also want lawn mowing. I think it's a pretty popular service that we're providing. Um, they just have a uh, small um, backyard and they water plants. Excellent. And they are at trimokra.com. This is sent. This is received here at our webhook. We have copied it into the spreadsheet. If we'll go over the spreadsheet, we'll see that it says lawn mowing. You'll see that it's changed from received to ready to send. And of course, now we have the workflow we already had. I, the internal person, receive an email where I can click edit. Um, I can say water plants, um, avoid large dogs, whatever. I can now uh, go back to my email, click approve and send. I'm having a not sure what just happened there. Okie dokie. Um, and that has changed to sent and um, Nick has received the copy of the proposal. This is fantastic. So what we've done, if we go back to uh, the start, is we have taken the tools you already had, which is Google Forms. We eventually showed you how to add uh, webhook calling with Apple Script, uh, with App Script. Um, we put the we lodged everything in the Google Sheet, which we used for the status and a document ID, and then we had a callback for approval and sending. So, so two scenarios. This has been really good. Uh, good work sticking all the way through the end. Um, look in the description. There's a place where you can download all of these uh, scenarios so that you can use them yourselves and, and tweak them and change them. And uh, give this a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.